As we discussed in the first video, the audio module is the most important module, because without it, many modules won't function properly, and you won't be able to hear a damn thing. Since we always need this module, let's make a template patch that has it by default. We do that by firstly bringing in the audio module, as we discussed earlier. Making sure to select our output device, and then we'll click File in the upper left-hand corner here, and click Overwrite Template. It's going to ask us if we're sure, and of course the answer to that is yes. Now every time we open up a new patch, we're going to have this in here. If you find yourself using other modules frequently, you can put them in your template patch as well. This is what my template patch looks like, and you can download this template with all my other patches in my patch collection, which is totally free of course. Free. Now that we have our audio module in, we can begin to explore some different types of modules. Voltage-controlled oscillators produce waveforms, and are typically used to make tones. They usually have the four major wave types, which are sine, triangle, sawtooth, and square. VCOs have another feature that is extremely important, and that is the ability to change pitch. We can usually do it with the big knob like this, or we can control it with a port that's typically labeled volt per oct which stands for volt per octave. Volt per octave is a convention where increasing the voltage by one increases the pitch by an octave. So in 12-tone equal temperament tuning, that means that one half-step, or semitone for all the non-Americans, is either up or down 0.0833 volts. You don't have to know exactly how this works, but it's super useful, because we can control the pitch of nearly all oscillators with this standard. Most VCOs are free running, which means they're always on. If you plug one of these suckers into your audio module, it's going to be super loud, and we don't want oscillators making sounds all the time anyways, so we often control their amplitude with an envelope generator and a voltage-controlled amplifier. The VCA gives us a slider to control the volume. and the envelope generator produces a variable voltage that will essentially move the slider up and down for us. You can pick any flavor of ADSR and VCA you like, because this combo is going to work with all of them. But for this example, I'm going to use the stock modules. We plug the ADSR's output into the voltage control port of the VCA. Then we feed the oscillator to the audio input of the VCA. The audio output goes to our audio module. Now when a gate enters this port, it's going to initiate the ADSR sequence. Let's bring in a clock to initiate it. Clocks give us steady gates or triggers at specific BPMs, and are used to keep time in sync modules in modular synthesis. This clock is set to 120 BPM, so if I use it to initiate the combo we just made, it's going to start popping off notes once per quarter note at 120. Changing the BPM is as easy as twisting this knob. If we want the gates to pop off at different note values, like eighth notes or half notes, then we can multiply or divide the clock. In this case, we're going to trigger it at four times the clock value. So the gate hits every eighth note. Let's say we want two notes to play in time with each other. We can either drag the same clock to initiate it, or we can utilize a different synced clock. Back to the envelope generator. We can use these to make swells or plucks and anything in between by altering each stage. This particular envelope generator is in ADSR which stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. There are other types with fewer stages, but having access to all four stages is very common. Short attacks are plucky, and long attacks are swells. The decay phase dictates how long it'll take to reach the sustain volume. High values take a long time. And low values are very fast. 
Sustain is the volume that the note is held at if you're holding the note down. And finally, releases are just like attacks, with low values being abrupt, and high values tailing off. We just spent a lot of time talking about this setup, and that's because it's super common and useful. You'll probably see it in most patches. The next module is one that folks know and love. It's a step sequencer. This one's being progressed by a clock. Every tick of the clock moves the step sequencer to the next step. Many step sequencers like this one have two major outputs. One sends a trigger, and the other sends a voltage. The voltage is useful for changing pitches. And the trigger is useful for initiating ADSRs. So let's set this up to make a fun little melody. Turn some of these on and off, and turn some of these knobs. Bada bing, bada boom, we're playing notes. These knobs are great for changing pitches, but in modular synthesis we aren't restricted to particular pitch values, so some of the notes in our melody might sound a bit off. To fix this we can use a quantizer. These bad boys snap the value to the closest volt per octave that is in tune, and when I say in tune I mean 12 tone equal temperament tuning, which is just like a standard piano. We just run our voltage line through here, and it makes the adjustments for us. We can even exclude certain notes by clicking the piano keys like this. Let's say we only want notes within the G-flat major pentatonic scale, which is all the black keys. We just click that in, and boom, it restricts the output from the step sequencer to that scale. So far we've talked about VCOs, VCAs, ADSRs, clocks, step sequencers, and quantizers. Pretty good job so far, and you're doing great. One thing about making a patch is that hard set melodies and rhythms can get stale quickly. A major component of interesting patches is modulation. Modulation is when we change parameters with control voltage, and how we implement this makes all the difference in a patch. Here is a C minor 7 arpeggio. I made this with the same setup that we just described earlier. It sounds great, but we can make it a bit more interesting by modulating some of the parameters with a low frequency oscillator. LFOs are the same as the oscillators we talked about before, except they move very slowly. Slower than 20 Hz if you want to be technical about it. Let's take one of these and plug it into the attack control voltage port of our ADSR. You're going to notice nothing happened. And that's because we didn't turn the attenuverter, which is this knob here. Attenuverters control the polarity and magnitude of our modulation, so adjusting it will let in some of this LFO. This concept can be applied to any parameter that has a control voltage port, and I want to encourage you to be experimental. We're moving on to some modules that are a bit more complex, but still very great and super useful. This type is called sample and hold. Sample and hold modules constantly read an input voltage. When they're triggered, they snag the voltage at that instant and perpetuate it through their output. So every time it triggers, it's going to snag a new voltage, and this can be used for so many different applications. Let's say we want to use a random voltage to modulate the timbre of a VCO. We can connect a noise source to the sample and hold input like this, and we'll connect a clock to the gate source. Now this is snagging a random voltage every tick of the clock. Let's put that into the tamper control voltage port of this VCO and see what that sounds like. Now let's use this idea to make a random melody. We've got the same setup going on. Noise to the input, and a clocked gate to the trigger input. Now we'll quantize the output to a scale. How about F minor? Now the sample and hold is randomly selecting notes within the F minor scale. Let's plug that into the volt per octave input like this.
These random changes are really great, but they can be a bit snappy. If we want smoother changes, or glissando, we can incorporate a slew limiter. Slew limiters even out abrupt changes, and we can control how long that change takes, and the shape of the change. We'll put a slew limiter just before the oscillator. We're going to plug in the cables like this. And now we have some slide. The last module we're going to talk about in this video is called a Bernoulli gate. Bernoulli gates accept an incoming signal and send it to either the A or B output based on probability. We can alter the probability to make events more common or more rare. Here's the random F minor melody we made again. I'm going to multiply the clock so it plays every eighth note, and then incorporate a Bernoulli gate before the ADSR. We just plug the clock input into our Bernoulli gates input, and then we can choose either the A or B output and send that to our ADSR's input. Now depending on how we move this knob, it'll send to either A or B more. I chose the B output, so I want that to trigger most often. And to do that, I'll just turn the knob that way. Now every once in a while, the melody's gonna skip a note, which adds some great flavor. And now we have something that can make our mama proud. We introduced a lot of modules in this video. If you have any questions, you can utilize the comments, and I'll respond. I have a write-up that contains all of this information, free, for everyone, on my Ko-fi page. Link in the description. If you thought that this video was useful, please consider liking and subscribing. Honestly, it helps out a lot. In the next video, we're going to discuss drums and rhythms. I want to give a huge shout out to my Ko-fi supporters. One of the newest supporters on the list is Randy Winchester. Thanks so much for your support, dude. You rock. Another huge shout out to Glenn Wyrick. 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 I'm really glad that you all like these videos and find them useful. Shout out to all my other Kofi supporters as well. Y'all are so great and I really mean that. Okay, bye.